We're honored to be joined by um, State Senator Steve Orojo. He is the, as we do this program at the end of 2021, he's about to become the Senate Minority Leader in the Upper House of the State Senate. Congratulations, Senator. Well, Steve, thank you very much. Glad to be here. How many years have you been in the legislature, by the way? This is actually my uh, 14th year. 14th. I was in for two very short, unimpressive years. I just want to clarify that. No, no. That's got nothing well, to do you, with anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're hey, doing listen, good do, stuff now. Yeah, all good. Hey, listen, biggest message from the November 2nd, 2021 election, biggest message you take away from it and voters should take away from it. Well, I think, I, Steve, I think what voters said loud and clear is they, they, were, they were tired of being told what they could and can't do uh, for now going on 20, 20 months. And I think it was basically, you know, uh, keep your hands off my children and uh, don't you know, keep your hands out of my pocket. OK, so the tax issue is one thing. The governor did say in an ad that Jack Chitterelli ran more than a few times. If taxes so your issue, New Jersey is probably not your state, but hands off the children. I want to clarify this. So you're saying that even though there are vaccines that are mandated for virtually for every child that, that to go to kindergarten, that a vaccine for COVID, that the government is overstepping? I'm confused here. Well, no, no. What there isn't a there, mandate. No, no there's no mandate. Listen, I'm, listen, I'm vaccinated. I do believe in, in personal, you know, the personal choice of the vaccine. Um, quite frankly, I think people don't trust government. Steve, you know that. People just don't trust government. We probably have better vaccination rates. They're, they're going up. We probably have better vaccination rates if, you know, uh, we we're providing the education piece and government wasn't mandating because let's face it, people just don't trust government for a, you know, for a number of reasons. Do they trust science? I would hope, you know, listen, the, the idea of science that people have to, you know, be, you know, be educated to it. I think most people do trust the science. I think most people are, are very uh, thankful that we had very smart people who came up with a vaccine very quickly, came up with testing, came up with a vaccine very quickly. But also, let's face it, it's, it's only been a matter of, you know, when you look at it in time, months that the vaccine has been has been out there. So it's, it, it's going to take a little time for people to get, you know, some people get comfortable with it. And now the vaccination rates obviously are going up. Um, now, children, you know, five, I think it's five and older, can get a, vac you know, can, five to get 11, a vaccination. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, I, I think more and more people are seeing that it is successful. Uh, the scientists knew it was successful. Um, I have scientists in my family and quite frankly, they got us comfortable with it. You know, the, the kind of testing that had to be done. So I, I do think that as science tells people, as doctors tell people uh, what they need to do, I think that's a lot more effective than government saying you got to do this. Senator, let's do this. Economic issues. Describe the governor, Governor Murphy's relationship as you believe it'll play out with the state legislature, particularly around fiscal issues in his second term. Well, it's, you know, ho hopefully the, the governor got the message that you know people want you know reforms to be done. I know you know I, I, I worked on the path to progress to have the reforms done. You know I've been You mean very... fiscal reforms in the state so that we get our fiscal house in order. Correct. I've, I've been talking about New Jersey being more needing to be more competitive in, in every year since I've been down in the legislature. So I'm going to be clear here. Um, in the governor's second term, there are a whole range of issues that are important. But one of them, and I'm going to disclose this, we've been talking about uh, child care for a long time. Um, and we have a series called Reimagine Child Care. Let me ask you this question, Senator. Do you believe there's a direct link between adequate, affordable child care and government subsidies supporting that and an economic recovery? As far as the uh, subsidies for it, listen, I do believe that child care is extremely important. I do believe that there's obviously a private industry that, that's out there. Some people need to, uh, some help in order to do it. Uh, I've been supportive of child care credits uh, with respect to, you know, for the tax, including- Tax credits. Uh, in tax credits, including refundable credits. Uh, so yeah, I have been I have been supportive of that. I am supportive of you know just like I was uh, one of the sponsors to help increase the earned income tax credit. I yep, do believe. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, no, you did. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. I do. I do believe in in the idea of helping people to work 
um, you know, whether it be through child care tax credits, whether it be through earned income tax credits, that sort of thing. I do believe rewarding work is, is the way we should go. Yeah. Senator, I've asked everyone about this because I have this obsession about uh, protecting our democracy, and I'm not the only one, but I believe we in the media have an important role. Yep. January 6th was an important event, that insurrection at, at the Capitol around that, and the so-called big lie around the 2020 election. A, you, some of your thoughts about January 6th, and B, you never bought into the big lie, did you? That Joe Biden did not win that election? No, the idea that, listen, the idea that that we have to have voter integrity, I've, I've been sponsors of a bill for voter integrity. I do think that too many rules were changed, and, and obviously we were doing it during a pandemic. But right. when, uh, my biggest issue was this, Steve, was is if you could go to a grocery store, you could go to, you know, the drugstore, you, you could go to a bar or restaurant, but you couldn't go in, you know, vote in person type of thing. And I had, I had a real issue with that. And I do think there are things that we need to do to make sure that our voter voting rolls are, you know, are, you know, are clean, are, are, you know, um, that only eligible people are there to vote. And I, I do think that that's important. However, however, at the same time, so many rules had changed and therefore people didn't trust what government was doing for a whole host of reasons. Now, I believe that we have to, as Republicans, whatever the rules of the whatever the rules of the game are, we have to play by the rules and we have to educate our voters, as many of our counties did in this last election, and people got comfortable or more comfortable with, with the, the mail-in ballots or the in-person voting. And we have to make sure that they're educated and comfortable with that. And that's our responsibility. And the time we have, Jack Shitterelli made sure that Donald Trump did not come in and campaign for him for governor. Um, did that matter in the outcome? Because Trump is not particularly popular in New Jersey? No, I, what, what I do think mattered very much in, in, in the election was all the executive orders and all the mandates here, right here in New Jersey, that people were You mean were Murphy, Governor Murphy's executive orders? Correct. And I do think that if the legislature, and you know, I, you know, twice I stood up on the Senate floor to take away some of the, the uh, governor's powers, not only this governor, any governor, to keep extending executive orders. The majority party, the Democrat party, tabled each one. They tabled it when Senator Tessa did it. They tabled it when Senator Darty did it. They tabled it when, when Senator uh, Panaccio did it. And I think if they had um, actually taken some of those limitations and passed it in the Senate, you know, um, you know, s some of the results may have been different. You believe that? You, you, you believe that the outcome would have been different if that discussion would have take, gone forward? Well, I, I, I do think, well, quite frankly, people are sick and tired of just one individual for 20 months having this kind of power. Even in a crisis, Senator? Windows. Even in a crisis like this? Was it, it was a crisis, but, but Steve, look how uneven it was throughout the whole state. You had South Jersey and North, up by me, in North Jersey was significantly different than it was in other parts of the state. But, you mean but the yeah, COVID was, rates, the, the COVID rates were different sure. every part of the state, yeah. A absolutely, and listen, everybody likes to, the, the whole idea of being, you know, I come from a very beautiful section of the state where, you know, going outside and being socially distant is something we do every day. I want to thank Senator Steve Oroho and congratulate him for becoming the new Republican leader in the state, Senate New Jersey. Steve, all the best to you, Senator, all the best to you and your family. Thanks, Steve. Same to you. Thank you. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. See you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, New Jersey Sharing Network, the Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care, PSE&G, the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities Clean Energy Program, Operating Engineers, Local 825, Choose New Jersey, IBEW Local 102, Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State. And by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe. And by ROINJ. Every day, nearly 2 million customers across New Jersey rely on PSENG to provide natural gas. 
And every day, PSC and G is committed to doing it safely. That includes making sure you know what to do if you smell gas. A natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs. If you suspect a gas leak, leave your home immediately. Get far away, then call 911. Remember, smell, leave, call. Protect the ones you love. Learn more at PSCG.com slash gas safety.